Commissioners, it's Tuesday, uh, July 15th, uh, for a meeting of the cover sheet review committee. We have uh, a few cover sheets remaining to be reviewed that either had to be deferred from yesterday's actions as well as amended cover sheets. Um, David, the first thing from Queens involved is when Walter will watch you for the Republican candidate for member of the Assembly in the 37th District. Commissioners, we've had several um, defects. First with the cover sheet, uh, the identification number. So is this the regular? Or this is the regular cover sheet. Okay. Uh, this was deferred no, yesterday. There's no, There's no ID numbers. numbers. Okay. Uh, in addition, um, it uh, the other part is will relate directly to private the petition. So first, we wanted to present you the cover sheet defect that lacks the, the ID number for the volume. We ask that you authorize a notice of non-compliance to be sent down. In addition, the staff in the uh, petition filing area identified for us, and we then examined the petition volume. Hold on, just to see if I. Ah, okay. I see. Well, he's been oh, you know, yeah. as a Republican. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I just, because I watch you, yes. will we'll say, say something. something. Yes. Sorry. Which is his own petition Sorry. was submitted. Oh, as they were processing this in the candidate records unit, they identified the problem we've had in prior years, the submission of pre-printed names and signatures, uh, addresses and no signatures, as well as in this year, the inclusion of extraneous materials uh, including court transcripts, written communications. Right. Well, we have the cover letter done on referring this eventually, but that's not for us no. at this time. But what we'd like to do is request authorization to place this on the prima facie list for the full yes. hearing. I, I, to give them an opportunity to appear that the petition uh, does not contain, uh, contains material uh, not in accordance with the statutory requirements. And I believe I will then make the same recommendation to make the referral as well if, if we sustain that. Okay, so, so this is the same as this? Is well, this is this cover sheet. Okay. You can correct right. this cover right. sheet, yeah. but I believe the petition, mm -hmm. wonder, but we, okay. as in past practice, we've shown it to the Commissioner's Committee where there's been um, something other than the normal petition submitted. Fine. I think it should go on prima facie. Okay. Absolutely. All right. Get your letter out. Thank you. Watch it. Next borough. Hi, and you're again? Uh, Michael. Hi, Michael. Uh, yes. Fred, you may. Yes. Commissioners, uh, your, one of your committees on July 9th authorized a notice going out to the candidate Pamela Hamilton Jones seeking the female member of the Democratic State Committee for the 83rd Assembly District that the number of volumes was omitted from her cover sheet. Uh, in compliance on the 14th, they filed an amended cover sheet setting forth the number of volumes and the five volumes. It also has the required certification. We're recommending that you find this to be a valid cure. Okay. Is that the original that they filed? No, that's the copy we, okay. we okay. reviewed. The originals, all the originals are in CIU. Okay. second amended cover sheet that came in, though, um, the team that reviewed that identified uh, a defect that wasn't. So let me give you the report. The original cover sheet review team identified that the cover sheet zip code did not match the address on petition 365. It was 10453 on the cover sheet, 10452 on the petition. The team did not identify the fact that on petition 366, also claimed on the cover sheet, the zip code did match the one on the cover sheet. Uh, a non-compliance notice was sent uh, saying that the zip code on the cover sheet does not match the zip code on the petition without specifying which volume. Uh, they filed an amended cover sheet on July 14th in response to the NCN, and that's when the other team reviewed found that we now have two petitions for the same candidate on the same cover sheet claiming two different IDs. The, uh, second, the amended cover sheet now has the other zip code. 
Um, it's the recommendation of the, our, our staff that a notice of a prima facie defect be sent to the candidate, advising him of the opportunity to appear at the hearing and submit an explanation why there are two different zip codes on the same on each environment of this petition. Uh, pending the hearing, we recommend that we uh, that you ref defer review of the amended cover sheet because depending on whether or not he gives you a satisfactory, satisfactory explanation that either a printer's error was for one or the other, and the correct address should either be 10452 or 10453, we will then have either a valid original cover sheet or a valid amended. So we think it's premature to present the cover sheet now because the real defect exists with the petition, which should have identified as a prima facie to begin with. So they filed two separate cover sheets? They filed the one cover sheet the original both volumes? He had the original cover sheet, and the zip code is 10453. They filed the amended cover sheet to deal with the defect we identified with 10452, claiming the same two volumes. The difference is that in volume 65, okay, it's 10452, and here in 66, it's 10453. The, and they printed the, it. The, 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 it wasn't clear to me that they filed an original cover sheet and then an amended cover sheet. Yes. They didn't possible. file two separate. No. Okay. And the only reason they filed the amended is we sent the notice saying that the a zip code on this petition didn't match the original cover sheet. So the fact is is that this is timely filed with others. So again, the question becomes how do you explain this because otherwise um, we don't have a valid cover sheet because it's the question is with different zip codes and given the fact that the statute says mailing the petition address. should have an accurate mailing address as well as the residence address, that's why we think a prima facie defect is the appropriate remedy so that they can come to explain to you in full in, uh, in uh, okay. two weeks. Okay. So the recommendation is to defer. Um, you but we should probably communicate with them and explain. We will do that in the prima facie defect and say that. And I'm going to use that language that advising a lawyer to know that pending the, the, it's the, the commission is deferred uh, until the prima facie hearing the review of the amended cover sheet. And that's why I think we wrote it out so it's on the record. And you may want to just review that in the bottom. And, Maybe even just initially. But it took me a little bit of time to figure out exactly what happened. The FU is not meant to the derogatory <laughs> matter. I should put that on the record. Okay, Ron, since done. And there was nothing to report for Staten Island, so you guys are done. There were a number of amended Manhattan cover sheets filed. Are they all okay? Uh, no, they, I don't think they're ripe yet, though, given when the notices went out. We have to wait for the end of the three-day period. They should be ready Thursday. Uh, Friday. Right, for Thursday. So they'll be going Friday. Is that the first one? Yes, this is a Democratic Party, uh, State Senate 18th State uh, Senate District, in Medina. She, um, Filed originally eight volumes, but uh, two volumes were repeated, so she amended the cover sheet to have uh, seven volumes. Got rid of the uh, duplicate volume number. So we recommend it as a valid, valid cure. cure. Okay. Uh, individual cover sheets with a number for each of the volumes. They have filed an amended cover sheet for multiple candidates. With respect to the candidate Balil Malik for member of the assembly, it is a valid cure. He appears on all of the volumes claimed on the cover oh, sheet. The other people are now, only on some of them. In this was the Balik Malik, uh, Malik as Democratic State Committee member, Ms. Ruffin for the female committee, and Guillermo Philpotts do not appear on volume 1563, which is claimed on the 
um, cover sheet, and they're all there. So we're going, to, we're going to recommend that you find, with respect to the candidate for the assembly, Mr. Malik, it's a valid cure. With respect to the three others, it's an invalid cure. This record, we didn't know how to stamp the uh, the actual cover sheet. Solange Winston, uh, judicial delegate for the 55th AD. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's the two issues on the original cover sheet was a uh, misspelling of the name as Safange instead of Solange, and the address uh, was missing the last part, uh, which is first walk. So the amended cover sheet corrected both. One fifty four Kingsborough First Walk is the correct address, which is now on the amendment sheet. They left out the uh, first walk for the other candidate. Oh. Is there a difference? Is there yes, any? there are multiple Kingsborough walks in that housing development. Each number is specific. The petition has Kingsborough First Walk. So there's there's more than one walk at yes. 154 Kingsborough. Okay. Yeah, that's the it's a public housing development. And they use it with the the usually, my experience is that the next one is 156 or 158 rather than first walk, second walk. No, no, this is within the project. It's a several block project. It's 154 Kingsborough first walk, then maybe 164 Kingsborough first walk. It's, it's like a, it's not a full street, but that's the way, the way they built the buildings, that's the delivery address. So you have someone, Kingsborough First Walk, you'd say like a 12 project building, a uh, complex, and there's like three or four walks with a couple of buildings on each. Oh. Surprised it's not in Queens, because they have, they, they. But, that's, but this is, I, I this understand. Is like, a, like a four block square area that the streets don't run through, what they, the housing authority developed their mm -hmm. own streets. Walks. <laughs> so you can't bicycle or drive on them. You, can you can't drive walk. them. I guess you can. You can. You may be able to bicycle. Skateboard <laughs> or <laughs> yeah. you can't skateboard anywhere nowadays. Mm -hmm. so, uh, on this one, um, this is for State Senate 19th uh, 25th yes. Senate District. Um, the first issue was a misspelling of the name, and uh, they corrected that, and they also the name of the candidate. Yes, yes. the first name. First name was uh, had an additional T, so it was Velma, Velma Tet, and it should be Velma Net. And the additions were correct. Yeah. In addition, they disclaimed two, two volumes. volumes on yeah. the amended cover sheet. Okay, so this would be valid, right? Yes. yes. Did you sit down on the wrong cord? What? Did they just yes. Yeah, I think she just wasn't on there. Yeah, I think they were. They did not do it, and now they uh, now they added the language in saying that they're only claiming these volumes. So, well, so there's no need to send an opportunity to claim the letter either. All right, then the problem one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So on this one, uh, the original issue was that they had uh, incorrectly stated the volume number. And uh, we sent them a NCN notice for that, but uh, on first review, the cover sheet team or review team did not catch that there was a zip code missing on the petition. Uh, we were supposed to send out a, a prima facie letter. So the, uh, the fact is that two of the defects initially was that the uh, one that they attached the cover sheet to the petition in violation of rule C1, and there were no ID numbers. Uh, upon the filing of the amended cover sheet, we realized that um, there's a defect with the petition itself. Michael. Now that there's no zip code. 
So our recommendation is the board didn't identify the defect with respect to the zip code within the prescribed time period, and we didn't give them an opportunity to cure that we treat the amended cover sheet as valid but put the petition on the prima facie list uh, for them to explain why the petition was presented to the public without the zip code. Okay. And again, the only potential would be that they offer the printer's letter, I guess, to conform it to the... So, but this said there were nine different... Is it because this number has nine, that's what they did? I'm not sure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So, so it's not even nine numbers. I, would, I believe there is. There is nine pages. Nine pages. Five, so they didn't even have to file a cover sheet. Yeah, that was the issue. They weren't required to file a cover sheet because they were under the ten, ten pages. But since they did, we had to review it. Uh, there are about 461. Five percent is 24. Did they put that on here too? No. This one they followed the, the sample form that they created. That was, so I think the recommendations we treat the cover sheet for the, at this point as valid, the amended, and then we'll deal with the issue of not having on the petition at the prima facie. Okay. So I'm going to mark this as valid. And I would note this person lives on Avenue A in, in Manhattan and there are no walks. <laughs> All the extra names that the city council has are walks, places. And this is a summary of the, this is that summary we asked to put you okay there's names with the kind of fascia at the bottom. Yeah, so the zip code is We'll get that from kind of fascia out today. Notices of non-compliance and or opportunities to claim go overnight. Notices of the prima facie will go regular yet because the hearings are not until the 29th, so we figured that... Uh, Is there a confirmation that they received those? No. Both, all of our materials go out first class, either first class or even the express mail signature is waived because... Uh, it's an old gimmick. They don't want to sign right. and then they don't claim they so never got it. So we keep a copy of that or we keep a copy of the envelope so we know that it's been mailed and the date mailed. So um, under the CPLR, there's a presumption of regularity if you're deposited with a post-paid envelope. Adams v. Lindzel well, you have to the proposition good. of the mailbox rule. Commissioner, we met the target. That concludes the cover sheet for me. Thank you, Commissioner. It was in the movie. Uh,